Well, welcome everybody. And again, I'm Ali W. So feel free to let us know in the chat if you have any questions and I will make sure that we get them over to Tamara. Um, and I will pass things over to Tamara. Hi everybody, like she was saying, I'm Tamara from Moogly. And just to give everybody a few more minutes to join if they're still just getting here, real quick, um, what we're doing right now is we're talking about the Karen Cake Off. And I'm going to be teaching you how to add some icing to some of your projects. Now the Karen Cake Off is an amazing event happening at Michaels and on michaels.com. So do check that out if you haven't already. All you need to do is make a project featuring one of the Karen Cakes yarns from Michaels, upload that photo, and you could be entered for a chance to win up to 500 cakes of yarn, like 500 cakes of yarn. It's an amazing amount of yarn. There's even gonna be finalists who are each gonna get 50 cakes of yarn. It's an amazing, very generous contest. So please do check that out. And of course, it comes with some new free patterns for those um, amazing cakes as well. So be sure to check those all out. One of the patterns that I'm working on today is this Misty Chevron shawl. And I'm not going to be demonstrating how to actually knit the shawl today. Instead, I'm going to picking, be picking up some crochet hooks so that we can add some beautiful beading to this shawl. So what this shawl is made out of, first I'll show you the yarn. I've already got some pre-pulled here so that I can use it right away. But, um, oh, sorry about that. The lights are a little glary today. I tried fixing them, but they really wanna be bright. But this is the interesting part anyway, not the label. This is Karen Latte Cakes. And you can see this is a really fuzzy, gorgeous textured yarn. It is a great weight, is officially, let me double check, it is a five. And you can see it doesn't look that thick in the fingers, but with all that fuzz, it really does bulk it up. and has this gorgeous self-striping effect. It's really, really lovely stuff. So the shawl itself that I'm going to be working on, I happen to have two of them here. This is the one I'm gonna be working on. It doesn't have anything added to it yet. It doesn't have any icing, but you can see just how beautiful this shawl is on its own. And then we get to dress it up a little bit with some beads. So to add beading uh, with crochet to a project, it doesn't matter if it's a knit project or a crochet project, or you could probably even use this technique on something with an open enough weave if you wanna do it to a woven cloth. Um, but for this project, of course, we're going to be using this gorgeous knit shawl made with Karen Latte Cakes. So you'll want to have a hook that fits well in your project. So if it's a crochet project, you can go ahead and use the crochet hook that you use to make that project. Uh, if it's a knit project or something else, you just want to go ahead and maybe check the label, uh, look at the knit pattern if that's available, find a hook that nicely fits through that fabric that you can tell it's not too big, not too small. Um, if you've been knitting and crocheting for a while, you kind of know what I mean. You can kind of tell, okay, this is the right size loop for this project. Um, again, you can also check the label on the, um, on the yarn itself. That can be a really good jumping off point. And then you're going to need a smaller hook. And the size of this hook is going to depend on the size of beads you're using. Now, if you want to bead your project, there are so many beautiful beads at Michael's to choose from, right? Um, you can get tiny little beads for thread projects. You can get great big beads for bigger projects. And today I'm going to be using pony beads. Um, they're, they're very affordable. They're um, very easy to find. There's some great ones at Michael's. Um, this is one of the packages from Michael's here. You can see pony beads. And this is a nice big size. And this is going to be great today because it is good for demoing. So it's going to be a lot easier for you to see. And it's also great when you've got bulkier yarns. I think with the right pony beads, you can get a very elegant look. It isn't going to look like a child's project. I'll be honest, when I first ordered the beads for this, knowing there were pony beads, I was a little skeptical. But once I started adding to this shawl, them to this shawl, I really, really enjoyed the look. So for the smaller crochet hook, the key is just to make sure it fits nicely through that bead. So that's why I'd say it depends on the size of bead you're using. If it's a tiny bead, you're going to need a tiny little thread hook. If it's a bigger bead, like a pony bead, this one is a B or a 2.25 millimeter hook. So a little bit bigger, and it doesn't have to be exactly the size, as long as it fits through that bead, then it's the right size hook to add beads with. So if we come on down here to the table, we can see here, here's the shawl kind of crumpled up a little bit that I've added beads to. And I didn't weave in my ends because I need to send these shawls back to uh, the yarn company, so you'll have to forgive me on that one. But you can see here, you can just add beads with that crochet hook. You can do all sorts of different things here. I've just added some simple beads on some chains. These are the silver ones. And you can see, I think that Liberty looks really nice, right? I'm, I was really surprised and pleased with how good the pony beads look on here. These were some silver ones. And if we move on down here, I added some crystal ones. Those are a little harder to see. 
here on the camera, but they are just fun and sparkly in person. And then down here, what happens if you add more than one? You can get some different looks. So these are the different things we're going to be exploring today. It's all the same technique and it's relatively simple um, and it's a lot of fun. And it only uses basic crochet stitches. You can get fancy, of course, with crochet. There's all kinds of different stitches you can try. Um, but I wanted to keep it pretty simple today for the knitters in particular who may not crochet that often. So the, the uh, crochet stitches, if you will, that I'm going to be using here really are the most basic of stitches. Now, when I added the edge to that previous shawl, I pretty much stuck to that bottom edge right there, right along the bottom of the shawl. But you could theoretically do this technique and add them anywhere in the shawl. If you wanted to add a line of beads right through the middle or across the top, anywhere you wanna add beads. Um, if you watched my surface crochet video last week here on Michaels, or if you wanna check that out on the Michaels program, you'll see after this class how you could add beads via surface crochet. So you can really do all kinds of really neat things with it. So let's go ahead and start right here at the end. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up some of this yarn. And it's a little bit, of course, we managed to be in a little bit of a uh, white spot in the yarn, which I know is a little bit harder to see. So let me pull that out a little further here until we get to some blue. All right, there we go. Now we've got some color. It'll be a little easier to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my larger crochet hook, the one that I would if I were crocheting this project, I would be using. And I'll go ahead and stick that right at the end wherever I want to go ahead and start adding those beads. So you just wanna find a spot that your crochet hook fits naturally right under that stitch. Basically, if you've picked up stitches before, that's the line we're working along. So then I'm going to go ahead and find my working yarn here. And I will just lay it right over my hook, pull that loop through, and then I'm going to just do a chain, which is simply yarn over with the yarn and pull a loop through. And that sort of secures it right there on the end. Now, from here, I could really do anything, but we're going to do start very, very simply. Let's go ahead and add a bead right away. Let's say I want a bead right here on this corner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up this loop a little bit, put that, that loop right over my finger so it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to pull up my little tray of beads that I want to add. It's a little bit easier if you get them in something like this that you can work on. Otherwise, they tend to fly all over the table. I've learned that the hard way. Then we take our little hook here, and we can just go ahead and put it right through one of the beads that we want to add. I'll pull it back out of the way here so it's easier to see. And you can see now I've got that bead on that hook. I can do it by stabbing it. I could pick it up and put it on, whatever works for you. Then I'm going to get that loop on this hook, like so. And I'm gonna pull it down a little tighter just so it's a little easier to manage. And then I'm just going to pull that loop right through the bead and drop the bead down on that loop. Then I can put that loop back on my finger to hold it nice and secure and switch hooks. Now I've switched back to my full size hook. There we are. And I'll pull down on that loop so that that loop now is the right size for my hook. It's, I don't want it up here. I want it nice and just right up against the bead. And then I'll yarn over and pull through for another chain. And with that, that bead is now locked on to that loop. I didn't need to pull the hook out there. I could keep crocheting, but I really wanna point out what's going on here. If we look closely, I'm gonna pull it right up to the camera here. Hopefully it'll focus. You can see that that bead is stuck inside that chain. It's not going to go anywhere. So it's not going to slide around across the surface of your stitches, which can be an issue sometimes, depending on how you add them. And that's why I really like adding the beads this way. So now it is stuck exactly where I want it. So what I can do from here is I can move to wherever I want. I could skip a couple stitches. Let's skip one. So we'll just kind of skip right over where I would add another stitch if I were working into the edge there. And I will slip my hook in there. And then I can yarn over and then pull that loop on up the up through our project there and then just pull that loop right on through the loop before. And just like that, we've added a bead to our project. So let's go ahead and do that some more. There's lots of different ways to do this. And like I say, we can keep playing with it. Let's chain one first. If this one's gonna be a little different, so we're chaining one first, gonna be us a little more distance from our project here. We pull up that loop again, put it over our finger just to hold it secure. Bring our beads back. I'm gonna stick with the silver just because they're a little easier to see here. Get that right on the small hook. Put the small hook back in that loop. 
There we go. And just pull that loop right on through. Then we can get our big hook back in action here. Yarn over again and pull through to secure that stitch. Now, if we do another one of those chains, just yarn over and pull right through. But before we come back, skip one and make another slip stitch right in that edging there. Then we've added another bead, but you can see it just sticks out just a little bit more from our fabric, a little bit more of a drapey look. So you can just keep playing with it like that. And the great thing about this technique is if you've made an error, um, you know, you didn't skip a stitch here or skip too many or decided you don't like the way this is looking, it's just as easy to go ahead and frog this as it is with any, any other stitch. The beads aren't, <laughs> other than them popping off and rolling away, you're not going to have any problems frogging your projects that have beads on them like this. And I also really like this technique because it is a great way to add beads, even if you didn't start out thinking about beads, but also when you've got a yarn, um, whether it's fuzzy or not, if you've pre-strung your beads and they're very tight to the yarn or if they have sharp edges, they can really wear away at the yarn itself. So with this technique, you're able to add beads just as you need them, exactly where you want them, and you're not adding any more stress to that yarn than absolutely necessary. Now, one thing to keep in mind if you're adding beads to your project is that you'll want to pay attention to the washing instructions for the beads as well. If you're beading something, odds are it's not going to be, you know, for kids. It's probably gonna be something for yourself. Um, so this doesn't have washing instructions on it. I would probably just go ahead and hand wash these. And if you're going to use colored ones, you might even wanna drop them in a little bit of water or something first just to make sure that that color doesn't come off. So that's a little caution about that. Um, but that's generally, like I say, if you're using these larger beads, if you use um, smaller beads that I'll show you here in a little bit, that may not be as much of an issue, but I still recommend hand washing just to reduce the strain of the beads rubbing against the yarn. So what else can you do with these? So many options, right? We could do some simple shells. If you do have some crochet skills, if you've been crocheting for a little while or you crochet, dabble in it once in a while, we could skip a couple stitches here. You can see I've yarned over on my hook before I put my hook in there. I'll just skip a couple stitches now, put my hook in there. And if I make a double crochet, like so, where we just yarn over and pull through twice, we pull up a little bit more yarn as well, there we go. Then I could add a bead to the top of that double crochet. I just, all I have to do, like I say, is pull that, that loop up wherever it is happens to be that I want to add a bead, go ahead and just pull the bead right onto that loop and keep on going. So you can get some really, really neat and unusual effects. And any border that you can do without a bead generally, you can go ahead and add some beads. Um, double crochets like this, a lot of times for a border, you'll make five of them and that's called a shell or a shell stitch border. So, here I've got, say, three double crochets. If I added a bead to the first one, I could add a bead to the second one, or excuse me, the third one. I spoke there. Pull that back down. We'll yarn over again, go right back in that same space for another double crochet, and then we'll add a fifth one. And five is usually what I recommend if you're trying on some shells on a project. That is usually a good amount to get you across. We'll pull a bead onto that one. And then all we need to do is skip a more, couple more stitches there and we can work another stitch in the border to finish that off. Just kind of like we did before when we had those other beads going there. So you can do spread it out across the chevron. Um, if I pull up our one before, let's see here, let me find the right end. There we are. You can see here were the ones that I just added the first way I showed. And then the next ones on here were ah, the ones with three beads. So if you wanted to add multiple beads, it's the same technique. If you don't want to add them, you know, to different stitches, you can get some really super heavily beaded looks as well. So I'm going to kind of take another stitch here just to give us a little more separation. There we go. And now let's say we wanted to add a bunch of beads. I'm going to go ahead and work a chain just to pull out from the fabric a little bit. And to add multiple beads, all you need to do then is get multiple beads on that hook. So let's go ahead and add three. 
there we are. And that one might be a little easier sometimes to go ahead and pick up and, you know, add there. So we are going to go ahead and put that loop on the hook. And now you can just pull that loop through all three. There we are. And if one falls off, you know, you just go ahead, get that loop back on your hook and put the bead back on. Not a big deal. Since it's so easy to frog, it's very easy to fix. There we are. So we just go ahead, get that big hook back on there. And at this point, you've got a couple options. You could make this yarn over and pull through and keep it really loose if you wanted those beads to lay out flat and straight against your side. You could do that and then give it a nice tug or maybe even make that really tight before you yarn over and pull over. But if you make that stitch really tightly, you can see here, it's going to give you a really fun, slightly different look, almost like a little cluster of little berries and things. So then you can skip the next stitch and go ahead and slip stitch to secure that. So that's another look you can get with it. Now I did see a question come up asking if you could do this with a Pico stitch, and that is a fantastic idea if you don't flip your stuff all over the table. So let me try that here. Let's go ahead and do it with a Pico. So let me try to think what's the best way. I'm gonna go ahead and make a taller stitch here just to get it away from the fabric a little bit so it's easier to see. So I've got a double crochet there. And now let's go ahead and make a Pico stitch. So a Pico, for those who don't know, is generally a chain three, and then you slip stitch in that first chain made, and that makes just a sort of little, well, it's called a Pico, but sort of a little circle on the top of the stitch there. And that can be a great way to add a little emphasis, add a little point. But um, so, okay, so what we're gonna do, we wanna do our Pico. So we're gonna go ahead and start uh, our starter chains. Like I say, usually it's three chains. So I would go ahead and do two. So there's one and two. And then, you know what, I take that back. Sorry, it was a live question, so I'm figuring it out as I go. I would actually just go ahead and make one of them because we want the bead to be on that second chain probably in the middle of that Pico. So before we make the second chain, we wanna add the bead to it so that that's where it gets trapped. So we yarn over and chain, that would be the second one that traps that one. So then one more for the Pico, and then we come back and slip stitch in that first chain we made. And there's different ways of doing this. People like to slip stitch from different directions on the Pico, and however you like to do it is right for you. I'll make another stitch here so we can see how it looks all finished. There we go. So there, we have a Pico, maybe not as dramatic in this slightly fuzzy yarn, but you can see there, right on top of the Pico, I would put it in that second chain. I'd add it before you make that second chain. Um, so that would be my recommendation for that one. Uh, were there any other questions, Allie? Sorry, I was on mute here. No problem, um, I a delay too, so I was going to take a sip of water. <laughs> Let me just scroll up here. Okay. Well, I'll, while you look for questions then, I'll tell you real quick, I'll show you here. There are, like I said, so many bead options at Michael's. And this is actually one of my favorite sizes to use. And this is the size of bead that, if you're looking at the sizing, it's usually six slash zero or four millimeter. And you can see these are really, really lovely little crystal beads that I found but these are really hard to demonstrate with. As you can imagine, these would be very, very difficult to show. So I'm not using them today, but these are one of my favorites for um, thinner yarns. So if you get a chance to pick up some Aunt Lydia's um, at your local Michaels and you wanna try a really nice thread project, a little light fingering weight project with beads, then I would recommend this smaller size. So I thought I'd just go ahead and show those off real quick. In fact, I have a project sitting here to give you a slightly better idea that's made with a thread weight yarn. If I pull up here, you can see hopefully there's just these those tiny little beads right along the edge there. And those were basically worked on that second chain, kind of like we did with the Pico, but I didn't turn it into a Pico. I just left it a long chain. So you can see how those tiny beads would act there. And these you might see more often, but like I say, I've been really pleased with how these pony beads look. I'm really impressed. I think these silver ones are quite nice. So Allie, did you find any questions for me? Yeah, so Wendy was looking for, um, could you show how you would add beads um, in the middle of the project? Absolutely, absolutely. If I brought scissors, I can. <laughs> I need to cut the yarn. There we are. 
All right, let me go ahead and cut this yarn then so we can start a new little section. I think that's a great idea. All right, so I'm gonna pull some of this up here because it wants to slide off into my lab a little bit. And you could start obviously at an edge and work your way in. You could start right smack dab in the middle, um, whatever you like to do. So this is gonna be a little bit of a combo of the uh, surface crochet, like I say, that I covered last week on the Michaels class. Um, so you can check that out for a little more information if you want. But this is going to be a slightly different version of surface crochet. Usually surface crochet is worked with slip stitches or uh, chains and you leave the end, the cut end on the back side of the project. For this technique, we're going to need to start with a cut end on top of the project and then we'll weave it in when we're done. So it's gonna be on top for now, but it will go away. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna try and work on the white stripe here so it's a little easier to see with the uh, blue yarn. I'm gonna take my bigger hook and I'm going to basically go around the stitch that I wanted to start in. I know it's, that's actually a little harder to see on the white. Let's come over here to the purple. So I will just find wherever I wanted my stitch to start, go to the back, and then pull the hook back around here so it pops back up to the front. Then I will take that yarn again here, find my, my new cut end, lay that over my hook, and just pull that on up to the top. Now, normally when I talk about ends, I recommend about six inches. For this technique, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna suggest even a little bit longer because you don't wanna accidentally pull it out as you're working and because you're probably not going to weave this back in until you're about done, especially if you might need to pull it out and adjust a little bit as you go. So now we've got our yarn attached right smack dab in the middle of our project. And from here, we can start adding beads or we can add a couple stitches. So just to show you how I would add more stitches before I go and add more beads, I would just go to the next stitch again, go right around it, just as we did before, from the front to the back, pop it back up to the front, and then oop, your yarn's right there, so you can yarn over and pull it up through, and then pull it right through your stitch. So if we look closely, hopefully it's a little harder to see with the fuzzy yarn, you can see I've added a stitch there and I can just continue working on across. But we're going to now pull that loop up, get our beads back here in the action, get a bead on my hook, there we go. And then just same technique, obviously, adding it on with the loop there. That part is pretty darn straightforward, there we go. Get it back on the big hook. And then I will probably go ahead and put a chain in there, like I said, just to lock it in again. And then I can come right back to the surface of my work with the crochet hook, going from the front, pop it up to the back, yarn over, and pull that loop through, and then I can pull it right through that stitch as well. There we are. So now we've added a bead right smack dab in the middle, and you could keep doing that in a straight line. You could draw pictures with this if you want to do some cool images. I think you could do some really cool things. And then when you get to the end, like I say, you've got that cut end. You want to put that on your yarn needle and just send it to the back and weave it in as you normally would. Um, if you wanted the stitches to disappear so that only the beads showed up, Obviously, you could use the same color yarn. That would help a lot with that, uh, rather than using a contrasting yarn. But you could absolutely use a brightly contrasted yarn and create a crocheted line along with that bead. So, and once you're on top of this fabric like this, the sky's the limit. You don't have to stick to those simple stitches. Again, if you've got some crochet skills in your bank there, you can make tall stitches. If I yarn over first and go right back down into the fabric, sort of pick up a stitch there, if you will. I could do a taller stitch like a double crochet, and then I could add beads to that. Let's take a couple more of those so you can see. So this would be a great way too to add a ruffle. That would be another fun embellishment you could do to your Karen Cake Off projects. You can get your hook right in there and make all sorts of stitches right on top of the fabric right in the middle of your project. If I pull that out there, hopefully. Like I say, this, this yarn is really gorgeous, but these colors fade into each other, so it makes it a little harder to see. But you can see there, there's a, a whole ridge there of stitches standing up. And of course, you can add beads to those, to any loop of them if you wanted to, wherever you like. And you don't have to be limited to adding them to that top final loop too. You could, since we're already here, let's go ahead and do another one. I'm going to start a double crochet. Now I've still got two loops left on my hook. Normally I would yarn over and pull through to finish those. But what if I pull up just that center loop? It's going to take a little bit more coordination on my part here. But if I pull just that center loop onto a bead 
and get that loop back on my hook and pull it all through. Now I can finish that double crochet and now I've put that bead in the center of the stitch. So then you've got a little bit of a yarn edge there too. So say for example, you wanted to add a beading edge, but you didn't want the beads to be on the final edge. If you wanted a little bit of yarn there along the edge, this would be a great way to do that. You just go ahead and add it to a taller stitch before you finish the stitch. And why would you do that? Well, the one thing that I don't like about beads is when I'm on camera or doing something where I need people to hear me and it does that. It does, it always clicks against the countertop or the surface or anything. So if you add the bead to the center of the stitch like this, that will give you just a little bit more buffer there. So it's less likely to tap on the table. So that can be another fun way to add stitches. Um, Allie, do we have any other questions? Yeah, Julia wants to know, do you try to keep a looser tension on knitted fabric when you're um, planning to add beads? Um, I don't think you necessarily need to simply because, um, you know, as long as you use the hook size that fits your project. So if it was a very tight uh, knit with smaller needles, you'd be starting with a smaller hook and probably using an even smaller hook then to add your beads. Um, you really can as long as I'm going to say as long as the stitches that you're making will fit the beads. It just depends how you want to use them. You can see here, let me go ahead and pull these out of the way a little bit. If I hold this bead up next to these knit stitches, you can kind of see how they're a good marriage, right? You can see that's a good size comparison right there. Whereas if I pull up this little thread guy here, sorry, everything wants to slide off the table onto my lap. There we go. Teeny tiny guy. I can get it to focus. There we go. Oh, it was there for a minute. Alrighty. So you can see teeny tiny thread and that bead is just about this, the width of those stitches. So I would say, you know, feel free to use whatever gives you the fabric you like. You'll just need to adjust the size of your beads and then the size of the crochet hooks to add them with to fit that project. Um, if you are somebody, I mean, if we're talking like industrial strength tighten knitting, then yeah, you might want to loosen up a little bit. So um, if you already know you want to add beads, just go ahead and sort of think about that. Keep into account what size bead you want to add and uh, what size loops you're going to need to really make that fit. So um, I just saw a question call, come up and I saw the first, I can only see the first few words of it. Uh, does it say, what do you do when you finish off all your beads? What do you do when you added all your beads? That's the part I could see. Was there I any more? Finish, <laughs> okay. yeah. Um, the tail. Okay. I mean, no. Mm, Pardon? How to finish with the beading. Okay. Um, so. If we didn't answer, if we don't answer your question correctly, let us know and we'll try and help out. But Okay. So we'll pop back here down to the bottom. I've only got a little bit of an end here, but when you've finished off your beading, okay. um, if you want to finish it off with a tall stitch like this, I would just go ahead and yarn over and pull that tail end through. And that will create a small knot like thing here. And then you can weave in those ends. Um, if you like to bring it back up to the shawl, that's what I always like to do. I don't like to have um, necessarily this out here, but never say never. I might come across the pattern that it's perfect for. Then I would just get to the end of that edging and make sure I work into that very last section with a slip stitch. And then I can yarn over and pull that loop through if I want to, or you can actually just give that a tug and pull that last loop on up through and then weave in your ends just as you normally would for any knit or crochet project. Now, if you're adding it to the surface, that's where it is actually a little bit trickier and that's more to do with surface crochet than to do with beading. Um, but what I recommend for surface crochet, and we've got our tall stitches here. Let's go ahead and work with those. Get my yarn, this one's still attached to the skein so I have to get out of the way a little bit, there we go. So let's go ahead and bring this back one down too since we're coming back down to the surface here and we'll take one more stitch around another stitch wherever we wanted to finish off. And then I would go ahead and pull that through to finish it off, just like the rest of our slip stitches there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut that yarn and pull that up just as I did before. And then I can take that end and weave that end through just like I did with the beginning end. And on the surface crochet ones, that one is very important because you really want to cut and pull that last one through that last loop because then when you sew that in, See if I can get it to show here, the gray stitch there. That's what's going to lock in that last loop. Otherwise, that would be loose there. So we just wanna make sure to sew that down. And you can send that right back into the same 
the same little stitch, if you will, as long as you make sure that you don't come back through that loop and let it all loose, then you're all set to weave in your ends, just as you normally would after that. Okay. Were there any others? I don't see any other questions. Okay. Oop. Was that a oop or a, sorry? No, I, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I don't see any other questions that have popped up right yet. Okay, great. So let's talk about, um, yeah, let's pull up the other shawl here and talk about a few of the other things you could do. Of course, when you're adding icing to your shawl, um, you can do whatever you want at all. Um, but here is just that simple shell border I was talking about without the beads. So you can get an idea of how that looks without the beads. Um, a really feminine touch. And this is a really easy border to add to. Um, it's very adjustable. You can change the number of stitches, change the number of stitches you skip before you connect to the edge again. Always just play with it to make it fit your project. Here are some of those shells that I did where I only put the bead on the top of the center one of those double crochets. And I think that has a really fun, nice look, a little different. And then here were some where I added it to all five of those double crochets. Exact same technique, just adding it to the tops of all of those to create a super blingy shell there. And then as we come down here, I've got a few more of those. These are a little harder to see. They are those crystal ones, a little more subtle. But here, I just added three of them to the top or that center double crochet of that shell, just for a slightly different look again. So we'll pull that down here. And then here, these are just some long chains. I think it was a chain of one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like seven chains I did. Did these about a week ago, so I apologize. I don't remember exactly, but I think it was seven chains. So I probably did three, it looks like here. And then on the fourth one, I added a bead, three more, skipped a whole bunch of stitches in between before I added that again. And that just gives you a slightly different look. If I turn it around here and hold it up, and let gravity do its work a little bit, you can see this way, you get a really sort of drapey, almost like a swag edge to it with some negative space in there. So it's just another way to add even more interest. And then you can see here, I worked all the way to the end. So I wish put a stitch marker in it, but then I've got that cut end. I could pull through and weave in that end when I'm all done. So I saw something pop up. I thought maybe it was a question. <laughs> yes, a uh, question here. So how would you add beads to the shells if you crocheted them first and then decided to add beads? Well, you would need to go back and um, basically work over them, but luckily I've got some blank shells here. So let's do that. Let me pull up that little section here. You can see what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You can hear all those beads <laughs> right on the top of the counter there. Probably not something you'd actually encounter, but when you're demoing stuff, it's always on the top of your mind. So there we are. Here we've got our blank shells. So let's say we finished that and we said, ugh, these need beads. What you're going to want to do is you're going to need to work back along them. So you could use the same color of yarn if you want it to be more hidden. Obviously this is just what's what uh, what's coming out of the skein at this point and I think the other color is going to be a little easier to see. So I'm going to jump over here to the second one to give us some separation and I'm just going to go and put my hook right in the top of that first stitch of the shell, the first shell that I want to add beads to and pull up my yarn just as I did before and then if we want to keep it really subtle, if we don't want to add any more um, you know length or size to this edging, I would Probably I would go ahead and very carefully, you don't want to pull this end out. Um, again, I'm doing this on the fly, so bear with me. I would pull that loop up. I'd go ahead and add my bead there. Just, you know, same, exact same technique. Add it with your smaller hook, drop it back onto your big hook. And then I would probably jump over to that next stitch. And this is assuming we wanted to add it to all of them. Um, if you only added, wanted to add it to certain ones, you would do the same stitches, but only add the beads where you want them. So let's say we're doing it to the, all of them. I'm gonna go right in there under those top two loops, which is how we normally go into a crochet stitch, like so. I would go ahead and just work that as a slip stitch and then pull up that loop and add that next one. Now this is gonna put these, I wanna say like kind of in front of the shell just a little bit rather than completely on the edges. Um, let me secure this one so we can see a little bit more how this looks. Go into the next one for my next slip stitch. You can see there how it's just adding them right along that edge with a slip stitch edging. So you can see it's in front of it a little bit. If that bothered you, if you really wanted it right in the center on that edge, then I would do the same technique 
but I would just go under that back loop only. Um, for those who aren't familiar, when you're looking at the top of a crochet stitch, you can see what we usually call the V. If you turn it this way, it's sort of like a V, kind of like a knit stitch, but there's two loops there. And the front loop is always the loop that's closest to you, and the back loop is always the loop that is furthest away from you. So it's always relative to you, the person with the crochet hook. So to go under the back loop only, we just literally put our hook right in the middle of that V. So we go under just that back loop, then we can yarn over and pull up our loop, pull it through for a slip stitch or whatever kind of stitch you wanted. The back loop was the important part there. And then we'll add our bead right there. And this, finish it off here. I'll slip stitch into the next one. So we can tack this one down so you can see. There we go. And that puts it more right along that edge. It's going to add a little bit more length though, if you will. Not a lot, obviously, not a whole lot, but this puts it in front so it doesn't add more length. By doing it on the back loop only, you're gonna add just a little bit more, a little bit more volume, if you will, to your project, but it does add it right to the, right to the very edge. And that can be a nice look too, because having that unworked front loop, especially if you're using a smoother, one of the smoother Karen cakes, then you're going to be able to see a really nice defined line of those unused loops in front too. So just an additional design element that you could add with this. So really the possibilities are pretty darn endless. So to add them, once the stitches are on, you do have to make more stitches to add them, but you can definitely go back and add them at any time. So I hope that covers that. Hopefully if, it, if I didn't cover awesome. that. Awesome. Helen said thank you. Thank you so much for covering that option. Okay, great. Were there any other ones? Questions that is? <laughs> I don't see any at the moment. All right, so let's have some fun with it then. We've got all these shells sitting here and I've worked into this one. So let's, let's go crazy. Let's, let's go nuts. Let's add a whole bunch of chains. Let's go ahead and chain five, three, and that's just like I was doing before. We yarn over and just pull that loop right on through, just like that. Now, if we add a bead there, we could pull that right through, just as we normally do. And then we could, almost like a pico, work back into that chain to lock it down, like so. Now it's right at the end of that. And we could keep adding beads as we work our way back up that chain. And at the end of this, we're gonna have beaded fringe, essentially. So we add another bead, find another next stitch in that chain, just get our hook right in there for another slip stitch. Keep working our way up. And of course, the more chains you make, the longer your fringe is gonna be. But I think this is a really fun fringe alternative, especially if you don't like trying to trim off all those ends to the same length, which is always the bane of my you know, trials with fringe. Always seems like there's that one that I cut a little too short and then I have to go back and give them all a haircut. Clearly the reason I'm not a hairdresser. But I'm just gonna keep adding my beads here as we go down, so I'm up to four. So it looks like I'm getting pretty close here to my end. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. But if I slip stitch down here to my base and you ignore the shell next to it, you can see I've essentially created a little bit of beaded fringe. So you could keep going, you know, now that you're connected to the top again, you could do a bunch more chains, you can vary the lengths of these fringes. You can really just add the bead wherever on those stitches you like to add the beads. So how are we doing on time, Allie? We're doing good. Um, it's about 1.40 right now. Okay, great. So that means we've got 20 minutes left. If you guys have your questions, plenty of time to get them in. Um, because yeah, this technique is just that simple. So if you've got ideas and ways you want to see the beads used, um, let me know. So if you wanted to dangle some beading, I just saw that one come in. Um, well, I'm trying to think what you mean by dangle because the fringe would be a pretty good way to do it, um, to keep it secure. If you wanted a whole bunch of beads um, that aren't locked in, that are more dangling, then you could probably go ahead and cut your standard fringe and add a bunch of beads to that and add a big knot in the end. Um, you know, just as you, you just add beads to the string and knot them off to keep them secure. Um, you could do that as long as your knot's gonna be big enough to hold those beads on there. That would be a little bit more delicate for washing. Um, I personally like securing them in with the stitches for me 
For me, it's a little bit easier, but you could do that too. I'm trying to think if there's another way to dangle them. I'm not just, oh, I got it. I think that would probably be the best way is to just, if you were gonna cut fringe and then be, add the beads onto that fringe and then not the end, or maybe you could knot them together. Um, and that's another possibility, actually, that just inspired me. Give me an idea. Um, if you were to do sort of macrame edging, basically, if you wanted to cut a whole bunch of fringe, which I don't have in front of me, unfortunately, you could add beads with your, probably your yarn needle would be the easiest thing, as long as your yarn needle goes through those beads. I've got a big one here, but you know, definitely with the pony beads, that would fit. You could use your yarn needle to add the beads to that length of string and then tie those fringes together, almost like you think of macrame, where they've got a section before they're tied together. You could do a lot of really fun things there, adding beads and tying that fringe together to get a whole different look. So I see we had a couple other questions pop up, but they're always, I guess I only can see the first few words, so. Yeah, so um, Julia said, is, do you think it's easier to add beads as you go or string them, string think, them on? Yeah, I think it's absolutely easier to add them as you go, because first of all, it's kind of like a super long chain. Um, so imagine, you know, if you're crocheting or knitting a blanket, you're going to be putting on, you know, 200, 300, sometimes 400 stitches. Beads are the same way. If you're going to add two, three, 400 beads, you're going to be sitting there counting each of those beads, getting them pre-strung, and then heaven forbid, one falls off. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just, <laughs> there's risks. There's, there are reasons to pre-string beads and there's, you know, different effects you can get with that. But I really prefer to add them one at a time with a crochet hook because then I can get them exactly where I want them. Um, the other trouble is if you pre-string them, um, particularly with knitting, they may start running around your fabric. Um, the advantage to adding them with crochet in particular is simply the way crochet works. If I pull up one of these other, one of these silver ones here, so it's oh, ah, a little easier to see, sorry about that. Then you can see how that chain sort of locked it right in there. If with the knit, simply because the way knit fabric is made, you can see we've got long lengths there. And if it's a small enough bead, it could travel right along that strand. So you'll want to think about that as well. I apologize, I bumped my overhead camera here, so now it's trying to be all wiggly on me again. There we go. Not exactly where it was, but it'll do. So yeah, um, I do think it's a lot easier to add them one at a time. You don't have to pre-count. You don't have to worry about being off. Heaven forbid, I mean, heaven forbid you get to the end of the project and you're too short. You know, you're two beads short. How, that's, that's heartbreaking, right? So if you can add them as you go, then you don't have to worry about, um, the only time you have to worry about running out of beads is if you have to run back to Michael's to get some more. <laughs> two great ideas here about um adding beads like the fringe um so there is one they said what if you chain five and only put a bead on the slip into the base instead of at the fourth chain oh absolutely um you could do that for sure um trying to find where we have some yarn attached here so we can play with that a little bit yeah there we are absolutely so let me find my working end here. And I am just going to make some really ugly stitches here to get us a little bit of space. Pull us away from the other beads so we can see what we're doing. There we are. Okay, so let's say we wanted to add fringe right here to the top of this shell for some reason. You could do a really long chain ahead of time. You could do it after, whatever is, works for you. Um, there's so many different ways to make fringe. You could loop it. Some people make looped fringe. Some people like to work back into the chain kind of like I did before, just without the beads. Um, and then of course some people cut the yarn, but let's say, let's say this is as long as you want it to be. Um, you could go ahead and add it right here before we go ahead and rejoin. But that's, that's just it. This is so, it's such a simple technique. We're literally just pulling that loop right through the bead that you can really play with it. Um, and since it frogs so easily, you just pull it right back out if you don't like what you made. I'm pull up a little bit more yarn here so I can try and finish this one off. So then I'd come right back down to where I started that chain and put the slip stitch right in there. So obviously if the longer, the longer the chain, the longer that fringe, this is just a little guy. You could put that there. If I had put it on before I began that long chain, it would have been right there. But it is always gonna kind of end up being on one side or the other simply because of where it sits on that stitch. So I hope that answered that one. Like I say, it's a little short stubby fringe, but on the little camera here it fits. <laughs> um, 
Yvette wants to know, um, do you think surface crochet in a smooth yarn will show up better on latte cake? And do you think that the shawl would possibly buckle from the weight? Um, these, I have to say, these beads are pretty light. Um, I think, I think they're plastic. Let me look here and see if it says specifically what they're made out of. It doesn't say what they're made out of. It, plastic is my best guess. It feels like plastic. So these are quite light. And of course, if you use these, the tiny little beads, um, you know, those are even lighter. But obviously, yeah, the more beads you add, sure. You know, if you, especially if you get some of those really big, chunky, beautiful beads that Michaels has over in the jewelry section. Um, really lovely. But yeah, you'll probably want to not use too many or it is going to get real heavy for sure. And it'll start pulling your fabric apart as well. So you want to use beads um, judiciously or use the small ones, I'd say. And I'm sorry, I forgot the first half of you guys' question. I jumped right to the um, second. Do you think that surface crochet, surface ah, crocheting yes. in a smooth yarn will show yes. up? On the um, case? I think so. Yeah. Anytime you work in a smooth yarn, you're going to be able to see those stitches more. It won't change how the beads themselves show up, but certainly with surface crochet, it's going to be a little bit easier to see uh, in a smoother yarn. If we pull up, you can see it even better here, hopefully. The latte cakes do have a whole lot of fuzz. So that does tend to, um, you know, hide your stuff, stitch definition and things like that a little bit. So yeah, if you want the surface crochet itself to really pop, um, I would recommend at the very least a contrasting color, um, but probably one of the smoother Karen cakes would be a little easier to see for that for sure. Awesome. Um, I think, so Helen wants to know, um, do you have any suggestions on adding beads to like throughout a knitted stockinette design? Um, gosh, well, I mean, this is one of those cases where pre-stringing might be the first, the most first thought simply because then you can, you know, you don't have to be pulling up each one of those individual stitches. And admittedly, that's the hardest, you know, the biggest thing. It is a slower process. It's a lot slower than stitching as you normally would when you don't have to stop, pull the hook up, the loop off, put it on that other hook and adjust it. Um, beading is, you know, it's something you take your time with for sure. I would still recommend adding them one at a time if you can, simply because that way you don't end up with wandering beads. They're not going to travel through your fabric. I think that adding them one at a time like that um, is just going to lock them in a little bit better. You would still, when you get to them, and I apologize, I don't have any needles here in front of me because I wasn't supposed to teach the shawl itself, <laughs> but if you have your two needles, if you bear with me here and you've got your stitches, and you come to that next stitch there, I would just go ahead and pop that off, add your bead to it, pop it back on the needle, and then make your stitch. And I think that'll help you get it right where you want it. And like I say, you're not going to have to worry about the count of the beads. You're not going to have to worry about the beads traveling through your fabric. And, um, and then of course, too, it just preserves the yarn a little bit too, because some beads can have those sharp edges that can damage your yarn if you run them through. And anytime you're working, if you pre-string those beads, you're going to be pushing them along the whole time, you know, as you work. Um, so that's just going to stress your yarn that much more. Um, and then, like I say, there's always the risk that you ended up one or two short and then, you know, that's the pits. And then you end up having to add them with a bead, the hook anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Another great question here from Carol. Um, instead of attaching the bead to the fabric on the fringe, could you attach the bead and then chain back up to attach it so that it lands at the bottom? Well, I was trying to think about that, and I think, let me grab some yarn. Let's have an experiment. Let's, let's try it. Let's try and see if the idea I have works. That's really the only way, and I'll tell you what, I think that's, as a designer, I think that's always fun of a lot of our time, saying, hmm, I wonder if that will work. So if we put the bead on first and then chained, I think it's just going to end up on the right side of this chain, but I have another idea for that as well. As we sit here, I'm, I'm having more ideas myself. I think that's the fun of it. So the last time I put the bead on last before I slip stitched. So this time if I put it on first and make that long chain and come back, you can see, oops. You can see there it's gonna end up on the right side now rather than the left. If we put, I'm trying to think, I think, hmm. Just trying to think if there's a way if we do, before we start chaining, I've just gone to that next stitch there. And if we put the bead 
on there before we even make our first chain, but not on the loop that was on our hook. This is the one I just pulled through. Sorry, I know my fingers kind of cover the beads, but it's, it's kind of the way you end up holding it. There we go. And then did our long chain. There we go. Now it's in the center. So that's it. To get it in the center, we want to put our hook in, pull up a loop, add the bead to that loop before we finish that very first chain. So that's going to be right there. So then if you want to do long fringe where you cut it off, you could cut that off there and have your long fringe there. Um, honestly, after that, you could only have chained one, just lock that in and then cut that off and knotted it. That would have been a really fun look. So let's go ahead and just pull I that out. I maybe said the out. question incorrectly. Okay. Um, <laughs> There's so many things a you lot can of do. People, a lot of people are following up with, um, what about chain five, bead chain five, attach. Ah, okay. Yes, that would be, that's going to give us <laughs> left what we did. Oh, I picked, no, I did pick up the right end right there where we had chain three, add a bead chain three. And that was with some space. So let's go ahead, yeah, and add one right to the end. So I'm gonna jump over here to start another one. So one, two, three, four, five. Pull up some more yarn. Add our bead right there. And then since this is the one that's locking it in, I don't know that I'd wanna count this as one of those because I if you want it to stay right there on the end then I would just sort of not count that I would go ahead and then count try and chain five more one two three four five so we've got the same number on either side of that bead and then we can come back down and slip stitch in that stitch we began in and yeah there you go now it is at the end right there so kind of like um, what we did here if I just went ahead and chained back up the chain without adding more beads. This is the same thing, but I just came right back down and did a bunch of chains instead of working back along that chain. So yet another look. And I think that would be a lot of fun too. Let's see if we can get an idea of how that would look with some gravity on it here if we turn this bad boy around. Get it there. There we go. So yeah, I think that is a really lovely look. Definitely the possibilities are endless. Anytime you've got a loop available on your hook, you can stick a bead on it, see how it looks. <laughs> put it in the middle of a stitch, put it at the end of the stitch, put it in the center of a long section of chains. Um, you know, like I say, you can add multiple at a time, add a whole bunch to that loop. This would be really fun, adding three at the same time to that chain. So let's go ahead and do that together, unless we've got another question I can answer. No, I don't think so at the moment. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, let's try that long one. We need to pull up a little bit more yarn from my latte cake here. So we'll chain five, one, two, three, four, five. There we are. The yarn's pulled up, but it's all tangled up in the shawl. All righty. Now let's go ahead and add three. And I just picked three because it's a nice odd number. I think that's a pleasing look, but you know, the sky's the limit. Add however many you like. There we go. Pull that loop through all three of those beads. And then I'm going to make this one tight because I kind of want this to make that little cluster, sort of that little cluster of beads. So I would just yarn over and pull that loop through really tightly. There we go. Give it a little tug, squish them around, go ahead and give them a zhuzh, however you want them. There you go. See, now they're all pulled nice and tight together. Then go ahead and chain five more. One, two, three, four, five. You can slip stitch right back in that same stitch again. There we are. And now you can see how that looks with three, three beads there on the end. So yet another, there we go. That's the dangle people were looking for. All right. <laughs> Yay. There's just so many possibilities. It's always hard to guess, but that's, just, I think that's the fun of it. Um, you can get really, really creative with these beads. And like I say, with the surface crochet too, don't, don't think you have to work in a straight line. You can take off in any direction. So if you wanna learn more about surface crochet, definitely check out the class I did for Michaels last week. Um, should be up on Michaels. And that will give you more of an idea of the surface crochet technique itself. And now you know how to add the beads. So any of those loops on that surface crochet that you wanna go ahead and add beads to, don't be afraid. Add beads wherever you like. Alrighty, so were there any other questions? <laughs> so 
Uh, I don't see any others at the moment. Um, people really loved that last one. Um, oh, good, good. I'm glad we figured out the dangle that works. Yeah, that's yes. Really I think this would be uh, some these sort of Christmas items too. I can only imagine. Ooh, that I mean, would be very us. cute. And let's talk about the fact that you can a bead. Sure, a bead is a pretty standard thing, but it's basically something with a hole in it. What else has holes in it? Jingle bells. So you could just as easily use this technique to slip on a jingle bell on your project. Or, you know, like I say, that bead section at Michael's, you know, you go in and it's like, I need everything. Um, and I don't know why. Now you know why. You can add it to all these projects. So you could add fringe like this, like I say, to Christmas gifts, ornaments, um, you know, go real crazy with it. You could do all sorts of things, jingle bells, anything with a hole in it. If you can slip the yarn through it, you can add it to your project. So, um, awesome. yeah. I don't know. I mean, well, there's like a million ideas and different things you can do, but I don't know what else people would like to see at this point. So, well, we are at 157 and I think well Good. <laughs> filled up a lot of time here. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Tamara, for today's class. And just a reminder to everybody that this recording will be available online tomorrow. And um, I linked the link to uh, Tamara's blog there on moogly.com up in the chat. And I will, if I can just search for the link for one moment, I'm going to just <laughs> drop it into the chat here again so you can get um, written instructions for some of the beading that Tamara talked about in today's class. Yep. And of course, um, we have two more weeks full of uh, Karen Cakeoff classes. So definitely sign up and join us for another. Yes, the next one I get to do, we'll be adding pockets to things. So who loves pockets, right? <laughs> we all love pockets. <laughs> we all love pockets. That is for sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tamara. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Everybody have a great day and stay safe out there.